Okay, hello everyone. Victor Momo from Excel Moments here, and I want to show you something interesting. Maybe I should concede first of all that the point for this will go to Power Query, but you ask me why are you then doing it in Excel? Well, because I love to. Oh, I don't know if that suffices here, yeah, but that's why. But now let me explain what it is we want to do here. In this video, we have a list of tables in a table which is kind of more like, you know, the Power Query concept, you know, where you have maybe the list of tables or a list of sheets, and then you can then choose to stack them up together. So what I have here is a table that lists the tables I'm interested in. So there are four tables, as you can see, I just put them here so we can see all at once, you know, store one, store two, store three, store four. And I list in this table, the tables I'm interested in, one, three, four. And I have a formula that automatically stacks them up for me. Okay. And once I take a name out, like if I take this out, control minus, you can see that I have just store one, which are, you know, the J's and then store three, which are the keys, as you can see in this table. Okay. The next thing is I also took it one step further, which is including the names of the table, which in this case would be the names of the store. You know, so it's obvious to you that, yeah, these names are from store one and these names are from store three, which you don't get to see, you know, up here. So how did I achieve this? That's what I want to walk you through in this video. It's going to be a rather long one, but I am sure that it's going to be worth your time. Let me show you my idea here. Okay, so let's take this as a list of tables. Okay, so these are the table names. I have six tables here, A to F. Uh, for simplicity, I've just, you know, kind of tried to visually put what I want to see here, just using the character 10, just to create, you know, a multi-line in one cell. Okay, so what it means is that at this point here, if I have just table A, then if I stack it up, there's nothing to stack it with, right? It's going to just give me A. By the time I get here, you know, I have two tables, which is what? A, B, and the stack would be A and B. Here is going to be A, B, C, all the way to the end. But you realize that from all this, this is the only thing we need, this one here. Right? Let me just call all that. Why do I say this is the only one we need? Because this is ultimately what I'm interested in, one that stacks everything up together. I'm not interested in the intermediate tables because the intermediate tables do not contain all the data. Okay, So this is really what I'm interested in. The question is, how do I achieve this in Excel using a formula? The first thing I want to start with is the scan function. And if you watch a lot of my videos, you will see me do that consistently. And then transit from, you know, scan to the reduce. Okay? So what scan does is that if there's a particular calculation you are doing, scan will give you all the intermediate steps. So it means that scan would give you, you know, at this stage A, at this stage A, B, A, B, C. Why reduce is only interested in the final value. So let's see how we can do this with scan first of all. So I start up with the scan, then I can have an initial value. There are two ways, you know, to solve this problem, the real problem, when I get there. You know, assuming you know the initial value or assuming you don't know it. So let's say I skip the initial value here. Now, the array I want to iterate to, true, rather, is everything in here. Okay? Right? Now, to the function, which is really where the lambda comes in. So lambda comes in here, and lambda has two variables. The first one... Is what I call, you know, the accumulator. Maybe it's not me who calls it that, but that's what it is. And the second one is the iterator. Now, what do you want to do? Here, I'm not going to use VStack and because I'm just assuming my tables to just be single values. But you know, in reality, the tables would be multi-colors, multi-rows. So you can't use the character 10 thing I'm using here. This is just to make it appear, you know, visually like what it should be, okay? Because... You can't use VStack and just say one value on the, the other value. The tables are, you know, two-dimensional. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say accumulator. I'm going to, as in concatenate, accumulator with character 10, just to give us the same visual view and concatenate it with the iterator. Now, let's try and understand what's going on here. What's the first value of the accumulator? The first value of the accumulator is the initial value. The initial value here is nothing. So it's more like you're saying you're going to have nothing concatenate it with character 10 and concatenate with the iterator. What does the iterator have as its values? The iterator has this array as its value. So it means the first value the iterator will have is A. Okay? So now accumulator is nothing. You are stacking it with A. It's more like you are left with A. That's what your result is going to be. Whatever your result is from step one becomes the accumulator value in the next step. 
So it means that A is our value now. That's what the accumulator is going to be. So by the time it's coming into the loop the second time, it's going to be A. And now the iterator already used the value A. So the iterator is not going to use the value A again. The value A, the value B, which is the second value in the array, is what it's going to use. So it means the new value you get is accumulator is A, iterator is B. You get A, B. That value would then become the value of the accumulator in the next step. So your accumulator is now A, B. You concatenate it again with your iterator. Your iterator has used A, B. Your iterator's new value will be C. It becomes A, B, C. And that's how it goes on and on. So let me close this so we see what's going on. Okay? So you can see the result of the scan. So at every stage, it's giving you the result you want, which means that you are on track. Okay? But remember what I said. We are not interested in all these intermediate values. We are only interested in the last value. And whenever you are interested in the last value from this construct, you just simply change the scan to reduce. Okay. Once you change scan to reduce, it gives you just the final value. Let's expand this row to see what's going on. So you can see that with the reduce, I get everything I want. So it means that if I have a list of tables in that table, you know, I can use this construct. But instead of using the character 10 like I'm using here, you know, I will be using, you know, the VStack because I'm stacking up, you know, two-dimensional arrays tables together. So let's go back to the first sheet and let's make this work. So I'm going to delete my formula here and hopefully I can replicate it. Let me just add another table here so that we kind of see what's going on. Okay, so now let's come back here. We are going to use the reduce function, right? But this is the idea here. There are two ways you can solve this, like I said. When you start the reduce, you have an initial value. The initial value, like if you remember the scan I just did, I didn't use anything. But it can give you some interesting results sometimes. And maybe you need to then introduce a drop function. So the construct that you see most commonly, the way people like to approach it is rather than, you know, assuming you don't know the initial value, you take the first value here as your initial value. So meaning that if I take store one as my initial value, by the time I get to the portion of the array, I would not loop through the entire table list again. I will make sure I remove store one first of all and look through every other thing. So think about it. If you wanted to stack things up together and you take your initial value as store one, meaning that you have the data from store one, by the time you are going into the array portion, if you include store one again, it means that when you do the V stack, store one will be stacked twice. It means you have store one, store one, store three, store four, rather than just store one, store three, store four. So what you do is that you take the first value as your initial value. Then you drop that first value and use the only all the other values you know as the array so let me show you what i mean let's start up first of all by using a tick so we do take and from this table that we have here we take one meaning that take the first row okay it gives you the answer store one but the data you're interested in is not just the name of the table is the data in the table and the data in the table you can get with a function that everybody says we shouldn't use <laughs> indirect okay so indirect of that name would give you the data so this is the data you know we need and that's the concept we're going to use across so let's go back to the reduce okay so i can go back into the reduce this is my initial value so it means it has the data already from store one now in terms of the array that i'm interested in the array now i will have to make sure that i drop you know that first value so that it only has the remaining values in the table. So I'm going to do a drop of that same table. I'm going to say drop the first row. By the time it drops the first row, sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah. Okay. By the time it drops the first row, you know, we are left with the other two. Good. So now let's go into the Lambda portion. Maybe I need to create, you know, multiple lines here so we can see it better. So I go into the Lambda portion. Accumulator, iterator, I can use A and B. Okay, so that's accumulator and that's iterator. Now, what do I want to do? I want to stack, okay? My A, the accumulator, the initial value of the accumulator is this value here, you know, this indirect, blah, 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 blah. So that is my A, I take that. Now, B is everything inside of this array. Now, you need to think about this very well. B, in this case, would have maybe the name store 3, store 4. So, but you're not stacking A and B together. Why? Because B is just the name in the table. But what you're interested in is what? The data in that table name. So it means that you're not stacking A with B. You're stacking A with indirect of B. Okay? So if B gives you store 3, then what you need is indirect of store 3, which is the data in there. Right? So once you have this, you should be good. So you close the V stack. You close the lambda. You close the reduce. 
let's do enter so let's see if this makes sense so store one has the j's okay that's fine store three has what the k's okay those are the guys here as you can see and store four has the t's yeah that makes sense so let's take out maybe store one from here okay right so now you see we are left to just store three and store four which is just the k's and the t's k's and t's and you know that works perfectly okay so but now this is just one step the second step is where you need to include the names of the tables alongside and that's important because you can see that if i didn't have these tables close by you know i wouldn't really know whether these first four names or five names are store one store two store three so i want to have a table where the names of the table are in the first column before the data okay? like you may probably see in like a power query okay so let me go back and show you that so here you can see this is what it looks like you have the names of the stores, which in this case are the names of the tables, and you then have the data to decide. So how do we do this? So let me um, bring the table here, you know, down. I'm just going to maybe bring it here so I can have it inside so we can see it. All right. Okay. So now let's now start the second solution. So it's using the same concept, but I will just define a little more variables to make the solution, you know, neater. So let me start up using a let, okay? And let me say I need the first value in the table, which I may just call first, maybe t, first in table, okay? And the first in table is defined as, you know, doing a take of this, yeah, comma, one, okay? So that's the first thing you need. Now... Once you've taken that, you need the others. So I could call the others maybe OT. So the others is when you drop, you know, when you drop the first one. Okay. So that will give you, you know, the others pretty much. So once you have that, we can then proceed. So we go now into the reduce portion of it. So we go into reduce. Now, what is the first value? If you remember the first time we did it, we just had what? Indirect of the first value, which is indirect of FT. That's the initial value. So meaning in this case, indirect of store one. It will give you the data in store one. But now we are trying to include what? The name of the table in the first, you know, column. So it's more like you are doing a horizontal stack. So rather than have just the data, you want to stack the name with the data. So what I can do is instead of just doing indirect, I can start up with what? With an H stack. So I will stack the name, which is FT itself, okay, with indirect of it. So it means that first column would have the table name, the next columns will have the data in it. So that would be my initial value. Now I put a comma, I go to the array. So what's the array? Array is every other thing but the first value in the table, which we've defined as OT, okay? So now the next thing we put is OT. Then we go into the lambda portion, which most of you now know. So we're going to lambda and we have two variables, accumulator, iterator. And what did we do the first time? We did a V stack and we said V stack of A, which A in this case would be the first value you have, which is the table, uh, store one and whatever is in store one. We stack this up with indirect, you know, of B. But now there's also a twist. We are not stacking with just indirect of B. B itself needs to have its own name in the first column and the data following it. So it means here too, you transform it to something similar to the first. So you do H stack of B comma that. So it means the first column would be the name of the table. Then the next column would be the data. So let's start closing the brackets. This will close the H stack. This will close the V stack. This closes lambda. This closes reduce. That closes let. And we should be fine. Okay. Fine in the sense of the formula works. Okay, no, no syntax errors. So now we have this. The next thing you can see is that it's only the first row of data that has the name of the table. You don't want to see the hash NA. So that's an easy fix. It's really just to go back in there and say wherever there's an NA, you know, give me the name of the table. Again, pretty much. So it will come here, right? So before the H stack, I will do an if NA and say if this results in an NA, all the calculations you are doing here, then what I want you to do is to give me the name of that table, which in this case is FT. Okay. So if you do that and you just stop at that point, you will see that the first one is fixed. Okay. But the other stores still have, you know, they are not working. So now we need to fix the second part, which is coming here too, still. Okay. Which is here for the Bs, which is the other tables that you're stacking up. So you do if NA here 
and say if na so let's go and locate where that is in here that's the h stack good that's where it is if it's na you need b meaning that if it gives you um an error then i need b which is just the name of the table okay we need one more bracket to close up uh the let okay and now yes so now it's fine so you can see that we now have a dynamic table that responds to whatever we have in this table so if i take out store one now you know you can see that my data shrinks i can see store three store four i could add store one at the bottom you know and you know that comes up so whatever order you have here in the table that's the order you see and the names are there at least telling you that you know you have done you know the right thing so this looks like oh wow this is so complex it isn't really because once you have created you know this um expression which you can then convert into a lambda you can use it easily on any other table all you need like if you think about this the only input data you need here is just a table that has you know the list of what uh, names of your tables right fine i mean my table name maybe uses table list and maybe that's all you probably want to do make sure that the table is named table list if you know you want to go this route you know just to make it easy and then whatever it sees in there is going to stack them up except you put a name of a table that doesn't exist and that's when you know you're going to have an error so it's easy to replicate okay so i mean we have dynamic arrays so why not use them to our advantage you may start to see, you know, performance issues if you have a lot of tables. I've used a construct like this, you know, once I had like, you know, I think it was like 60 to 70 sheets and I needed to stack them up together, you know. So I just had this construct, I pulled it out and I used it, you know, um, for the 70 sheets. And um, I had, you know, my data all stacked together you know, at once. But like I said, you may want to give the point to Power Query, but there's a lot of value in also having this you know, working. I don't need to click refresh at least, you know. So once I add a name to the table, it automatically shows up in my own expanded table. And I think that that's really cool. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. You can also subscribe to the channel, Excel Moments. For now, I'm out.